everybody. How is we all doing today? Kind of dreary out today. It is also Ash Wednesday. I probably should be talking about something Ash Wednesday related, but that's not what we're on for conversation today. Today is another topic about how to have a proper conversation with somebody else. And in particular today, I wanted to ask, is it extremely important that when you ask somebody a question, that they understand your meaning for asking that question, your reason why you're asking them that question. And not necessarily questions. Question is probably the wrong word. More mm, requests. Because sometimes it can just be a request for information. I just need a yes or no. I don't need you to do anything or act on it. And I think this is about understanding your audience, isn't it? Because you know there are some people who will just get flipped out and pissed off if something goes even slightly awry. So you got to know to buffer the beginning of the question with a, everything's cool, I just need to verify for next time, did we pay the caterer with a check or credit card? Or it could be you are asking for a favor. And if you are asking for a favor, or you put in a situation where if this one thing happened, you need a favor. But if something different happened instead, then you don't need a favor. How do you phrase it in that situation? Because you're going to be asking for information and for a favor. So then it becomes this little matrix. And that can be tough too because people will, some people will jump to doing you a favor. And you don't need a favor, but you do need information. So you want to make it abundantly clear that in this situation, please, please don't trouble yourself. This is a piece of cake. I got it. And this is tough, especially with coworkers, because with coworkers, there's so much, you know, goodwill and or clout that goes around the office, and it ebbs and flows, you know. And you want to make sure that you've got a nice stack of it behind you for when you go and do things. You, know, you want to be the guy who's always assisting, not the guy who's always asking for assistance. So that way, when you do need assistance, genuinely, it's not an issue. People are happy to help. But then I guess that brings up a good point is, is do you really need to bank clout for those who are so willing to give it away? Well, maybe not bank, but you should be doing it so that there's at least an appropriate amount of bank for you. Uh, you want to make sure ashes to go. That's strange. The church over here it says ashes to go. It was a big piece of cardboard written in marker. So I'm curious as to what in the world that means. Anyway, so there's that, but then it's more than just that too. It's also, it could, it didn't necessarily have to be asking for a favor at all. Um, you know, you could be asking about another employee or, I mean, it could be a family member. It doesn't have to be, I think an office because this is where I run into all the time, but it could be at home. You know, you could ask, uh, say you ask your mother, Hey, did, did, did Bobby make it to school on time yesterday? And that can be interpreted a lot of different ways. So is it important in that situation that she know why you're asking about Bobby? It could be that um, uh, if he there was an accident, let's say school starts at 8 o'clock, and right outside the school there was an accident at like 8.05. So if Bobby was on time, then he didn't see the accident. But maybe you just wanted to know if he saw the accident or not. And it could be any number of reasons why you're asking your mother for this information before you talk to Bobby. You know, maybe you don't want to mention it to Bobby. You might be sensitive about these kinds of things, but if you're concerned. You want to make sure that if he did see it, that you're taking care of him. Could be for practical joke reasons. You know, you need to know who's doing this and what's doing that and which way this is going so that you can work in some kind of a practical joke. <laughs> Thousands of reasons why you could be in that situation. So does it... Is that something you consider? I do. I do a lot, especially, and I'm realizing now that I should have caught this before I started talking to you guys, but especially because I want to know my audience. Who am I talking to? Because if this is somebody who is going to react in general a certain way, if they're going to assume the world's on fire or they're going to assume that uh, they, they need to do something for me, I want to make it abundantly clear 
why I'm asking ahead of time. Um, then there are others who will just take what you say at face value. I think what I tend to do when somebody asks me a question is answer their question directly and give them exactly what they're looking for. And then often gauge their reaction and try and follow it up with a, why, what's up? Is there something I can help you with? Do you need assistance? Because a lot of times, if I don't know why they're asking a question, I mean, th th there could be massive implications to why you're asking this question. So, I mean, I don't want to bug you. I don't want to make it difficult for you. But at the same time, if you're asking about something you don't really know all that well, let's say I was an auto mechanic and somebody asked me, hey, what kind of auto oil do you put in your car? Well, look, dude, I, I do 5W30, but why do you ask? Like, are you planning on putting that same stuff in your car? Because it's not a blanket statement. 5W30 is not the best for every single car. It's the best for me in my personal situation. Financial advisor. Hey, what stocks are you buying this month? Hold up now. I'm buying this stock fund and this bond fund and this and this for my IRA. Why do you ask? Are you planning on buying stuff as well? Because those might not be the best funds for your personal situation. You know what I mean. And that happened a lot in my old office where people would ask me questions. And it drove them nuts. And I never understood why. Because I was watching their back. They would ask questions. And I would tell them, I'm, there's no simple answer to that question. Something along the lines of what kind of uh, foam core do we keep in stock? Not a simple answer to that question. By default, this is what we use, but we have these four alternatives that we used to keep in stock, and we still have them in stock. So, that is as simple as I can make it, but you gotta understand that probably doesn't answer your question. What actually is your question? What are you really trying to learn? I need to match the phone core on the job that we did for this client one year ago today. Terrific. You don't wanna use the stuff that we keep in stock. You are asking the wrong question. I'm happy to help. I want to help. But if I simply provided you with this bit of information, you would be out of luck. You would have bought two boxes of this foam core that we keep in stock, thinking that it matched what we had last year, and it does not. We would have done the whole job, and it wouldn't have matched, and people would have been rather perturbed. But that being said, there's a lot to this, and I want to know what your strategies are. And I could talk about it all day. But in any event,